For many of us, it is the most important commitment to take care of our loved ones. We need, we feed as the Beatles song goes, and we work hard to ensure that those close to us are thriving. Today, there are 53 million people taking care of their parents, neighbors, and friends. And there are 53 million stories. From the Stanford Center on Longevity, this is When I'm 64, the podcast for caregivers. I'm your host, Ken Stern. Today, we bring you a beautiful story of caregiving that crosses generations. It's the story of a mother's love for her family and the story of a son who steps up to take care of her when she loses her job at the age of 75. And it's all captured in a new documentary called Duty Free. Rebecca worked in housekeeping at a hotel here in Boston. She was a single mom who sacrificed everything for her children. I never expected it to happen to me. My job and my kids with my life. People from around the world were touched by my mom's story and started to reach out. Hello from Sri Lanka. <gasps> Sri Lanka? <laughs> I think it's so great what you are doing. I can't wait to catch up with all your adventures. I hope you make it to Sri Lanka one day. We'll take you to swim with dolphins. Sounds like fun. Bye, <laughs> sounds like fun. I was just fired at 53 years old, uh. and I'm following your footsteps and doing things that I've always wanted to do. Thank you. You are inspiring and beautiful. Right back. Good luck. Good luck with you on your travels. Stay in touch. What became evident as we went through the comments was how many people or people's parents had been let go late in life. Some were forced to retire, and others were terminated on account of charges they say never actually happened. My mom's story was more universal than we could have ever imagined. That's filmmaker Sean Pierre Regis, heard here in an excerpt of the documentary he directed and produced. Sean Pierre and his mother Rebecca join me to talk about their amazing journey. I am a 36-year-old uh, former journalist and uh, who just completed my first feature documentary film called Duty Free um, and, you know, follows the story of my mom who was fired from her job at age 75 as a hotel housekeeper. And so we go on a bucket list journey to do everything she could never do while she was working, but she's trying to get back on her feet and cash it, but she cashed out her 401k for me to go to college. And so... Uh, the film, you know, really delves into love between mom and son, but it sort of asks the question of what we're going to do with a generation of 25 million people who don't have enough money to get them through retirement. And it, I will say it's the greatest story that I've ever told as of yet. I, I think one of the, the, the great things about this film is, is it's, a, it's hard issues, but there's a sense of joy. What did you feel like you had to give up, uh, Sean Pierre, to, 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 to be part of this? And... Uh, what was the sense of joy you had during the, 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 this project? Yeah, well, for me, you know, I worked at, you know, I was on camera at CNN and at HLN and MTV. And so really big names. Um, and to put down that job to pick up the camera and start filming my mom and start on this whole new sort of film journey. At first, it was kind of like, well... You're putting your all your dreams aside. This is sort of that you would be a television journalist and you know you know travel the world. But I realized maybe a year or two into it how much I was learning and how much I was growing. So at first I think it was hard for my ego, but then I realized as my mom always does in terms of giving gifts to me, this was the greatest gift that she could have ever given me is access to her story. So, Rebecca, let me, let me ask you this. Uh, when Sean Pierre said to you, I want to make a film of this, what were your thoughts? I mean, how, did, how did you react to the idea that he'd be following you around with a camera for, for a year or more? Well, he didn't tell me, actually, until after he started doing it. <laughs> You'll see me in various stages of no makeup, hair out here, and everything else. No woman would ever get filmed like that <laughs> if she knew she was being filmed. <laughs> But gradually, I got the message when he had guys with cameras. <laughs> and then we discussed it, did we not? <laughs> but it was fun. Re Rebecca, uh, was there a loss of identity? I mean, it was obviously a, a big challenge to you in the film around losing your job and not having work. I and mean, work defines so many of our lives. All the, all the uh, employees and everything, they were my close family. My, I mean, I... My son, the one that's mentally disabled, lived downstairs, but all my family's in England, but 
the room attendants and the housemen and all the people, I miss them. It wasn't losing the job. It was losing that sense of community and being cut off and not being needed anymore. And, and I was mad. I was disappointed. This is not what I expected to happen to me. I was gobsmacked. I was depressed. I felt lost. And I think, you know, if I can just insert myself here, um, looking back on it all, we had never had a true plan. Um, uh, you know, I think my mom expected to work until she died. I don't think there was ever an expectation that there would be any sort of stoppage. Are you just upset about, like, Possibly. Oh, I'm tired about everything. I don't know what I want. I know I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired of life. I'm tired of everything. Yeah. Life is testing you, you know? And it's good. You're going to be fine. I'm scared to kill. I know. I, I, but I'm not. Hey, Mom. Hi, Sean. How are you? Good, how are you? I was just sleeping. Kathy called me, that's all. Oh. I have. Um, well, I had a great idea, I think, and uh, I want you to hear me through. So I want you to write out a list of all the things you could never do while you were working, kind of like a bucket list, but more like a life list. And over the next year, one a month, I want to go out and do them. How am I going to pay for that when I'm not working? How, how could I do all those things? Uh, I don't know. My, that's on me to figure out, but we'll figure it out. I just want you to think about all the things that you missed out on, all the things that you sacrificed. I'd rather be work. I'll think about it. It was Jean-Pierre's idea to have the bucket list. He gave me a pencil and a pen. He said, write it down. And my first reaction was, who's going to pay for this? Who's going to pay for all this? <laughs> it was a you know, valid question. Um, <laughs> I didn't have any money. Um, and so what I did was I, you know, put it up on Kickstarter and told people like, hey, listen, I want to shoot this film. I want to take my mom on a bucket list journey. Um, will you help me do that and then i emailed every single person i knew they shared it with their friends you know our trailer went viral and it got 38 million views and so we started to get all of these donations from all across the world who wanted to help support this story of my mom um and a lot of those people became sort of fans um for years and years and years um and so we were able to build a really beautiful community of people who wanted to see this story through. Um, and, and also, in the meantime, heard from people around the world oh. whose stories reflected my mom's own stories. And that urged me on to say, I mean, okay, why aren't we seeing these people in our narratives? Like, this makes it even more important for me to finish this film. Because, you know, as I've realized, if you're over 70, it's like you are not seeing yourself on the screen. And if you are seeing yourself on the screen, you're not seeing yourself in the lived reality that you experience every day. And why not? Um, and so that's how the Kickstarter came about. Um, and uh, it, it really put fire under my bum to, to tell this story. And one of the first items on Rebecca's bucket list was to learn how to hip hop. <laughs> Hip-hop dancing, I loved it, but I was surprised that that was the one thing you wanted to do. The thing about having biracial children is that you can promote them and bring them up the way that, that you were brought up. And you can show them things and let them experience things. But you can't be inside them to experience the things that they're experiencing. And I've seen you dancing and doing different videos and stuff like that. And I always thought you look so happy and so relaxed and it's, it's so natural, almost like you have the beat of the bongo in your feet. I want to share that feeling. Let's see your best hip hop move. I don't know what a hip hop move is. Another item on Rebecca's bucket list, milking a cow. 
Hi, I'm calling to see if it's possible okay, so to milk a cow with my 75-year-old mom on your farm. I was calling to see whether you guys allow people to milk cows there. Yeah, we actually don't have any dairy cows here at this time, so there's oh. no milking. Can people come and milk cows on your farm? No, <laughs> no you can observe. Got it, but you can't actually touch a cow's udder. <laughs> no. Do you know of any farms that do do that? I'm afraid I don't. Okay. Thank you so much. If she wants to milk a cow, she'll get to milk a cow. All right. Okay, cool. It's something I always wanted to do was milk a cow. In Liverpool, we didn't have many farms. <laughs> that was a little bit. It is childlike. Yeah. And freeing and... Yeah. I'm really back to nature, away from the corporate world, and back to a, a time gone by. Also on Rebecca's bucket list, skydiving. And then there was the brave person that talked about the uh, the, the, the skydiving. Several people, all old people, <laughs> who are no longer living, many of them. <laughs> <laughs> Not from the skydiving, I hope. Uh, <laughs> He did it as a last thing, I guess. And I suggest it is the last thing you do. <laughs> Not something I would advocate again. Here we come, Sky and Earth. This could be the last time you'd use your legs. So. That's right. <laughs> Enjoy them. They were good old pair of legs, yeah, too. Good, they? they registered 14 miles a day on the pedometer yeah. at work. <laughs> Just breathe, Mom. Just breathe. Yeah, yeah. Good, you got that in here, got it here. Perfect. All right. Amazing. So um, I, I hope there's a duty free two uh, coming up uh, in a couple of years. So I'm curious, Rebecca, what would be on your next bucket list? Oh, gosh. <laughs> to win the lottery, I guess. <laughs> 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 That's a little cheating. That's sort of like, you know, I'll ask the genie for more wishes type of thing, you know. Yeah, right. I, I'm, that's probably not a bucket list that's yeah. going to come true. Yeah. 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 Or, or Sean, Peter, maybe maybe Rebecca will take you on your bucket list. So what's on yours? I'm really advocating that's for that. Saying, I'm yeah. like, well, yeah, now it's my turn after I've, you know, given this five years, like, now it's my turn. But I don't, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. As for Duty Free too, so many people have asked about that. So many. And especially since we're living together now, it's like, tape it, you know, what is going on? And while I totally see the value in that, um, I am now at a point now where it's like, gosh, I just want to like live and exist with my mom and like capture the memories in my mind and like be there fully to experience her. Um versus always having a camera in my hands and thinking more as a director. Um, you know, now's the time we did that. You know, now's the time for us to, you know, deepen our bond and, and create lasting memories that that maybe aren't always caught on camera, uh, but that we share together. And, and, and work together to create situations for elders. Uh, and my main duty-free thing is my last act. I want to see a last page in an employee handbook. The first page tells you where your sick days, your vacation days, what the rules are, 401k, blah, blah, blah. I want to see a last page in a handbook. This is what will happen on your last day of work under the following circumstances. A, you resign. Thank you for staying with us. You get your vacation pay, good resume, but able to come back to work. B, you're fired for poor work, get your vacation pay, you cannot collect. We're not going to rehire you, nor are we going to give you a good See me, you are restructuring. You will receive 60 days notice of such restructuring. You will receive assistance from human resources in training for any other part of our operation or a comparative. You will be able to collect and blah, blah, blah. So that people who, like in this, who knew the pandemic was coming? People who less fortunate than myself that don't speak English, what happens when they say, I'm sorry, dear, we love you dearly, but today is your last day of work. What do they do? People need to know. Mm. It needs to be in writing. So, so let me, so you started, uh, Rebecca, you sort of um, 
uh, walk right into sort of the, our next section, which is sort of what, what did you learn and what needs to change? I mean, let me ask you, Sean Pierre, about, I mean, you've learned a lot about ageism in our society, I, I think, in this process. Tell us what you observed and what you think, what you think needs to change and how might it change? Yeah. So, you know, the, the second act of this is, you know, first comes the release, get people interested in the film and emotionally tied to the film. And the second part is to, you know, push them to action. And so what we want to push them to action to do are along the three themes. Um, one is economic insecurity. You know, we talk about the millions of people who are in the middle. When we talk about older age, we often talk about the golden years, those people who have money to spend and have worked their lives to sort of vacation, right? And then we talk about the other end, those people who are living under a bridge and, oh my God, you know, that's all their fault. And then there's this massive middle of people who've worked every day of their lives and don't still don't have enough money to safely uh, get them through their act three. Um, and what are we going to do about those people? Um, what is the safety floor that we are willing to provide to the people who have helped to build this country? Um, and so economic insecurity is, um, and, and having financial planning conversations with family and all of that is part of our impact mission and goal. Another one, as you talked about, is age and ageism. It's pervasive. It took me as a young person sitting next to to my mom and watching how she traversed a website and how it wasn't made for her and how there are so many barriers to entry for older people in the workforce, despite them having so many transferable skills, despite them having an EQ, you know, light years beyond um, people of my age, we are, um, we are self-harming our future selves by being ageist um, at every turn. And that's important for us you know, to talk about and to partner with folks um, to make sure particularly young people see the writing is on the wall and that we need to make change um, now. And the final thing is care. It's like, you know, uh, obviously the infrastructure bill is, uh, is coming up. Um, care is a big part of that. Um, and as so many people are saying, you know, care can't wait. Um, there are people like me every day who are taking time out of our daily lives to take care of the people that we love because there is no safety net or safety floor for them. Like, how can we make sure that they are compensated so that they don't find themselves in the same situation 10, 20, 30 years from now? And so, um, you know, along with the rollout of this film, we'll be taking action on those three main themes, all things that I learned just by way of watching my mom and would have not had the pleasure or the, the sort of the ability to learn had I not picked up that camera and started shooting her story. This experience has been really amazing for me because I feel like I've been able to um, spend so much time with you. And it's really made me think about like not having you here. Um, I, I will always be looking down on you. One thing that's been a realization for me is, you know, the importance of having advocates. I think I learned how to be an advocate from watching you and Gabrielle, like having to fight for you and for your housing and for, you know, like you just to survive. I mean, it's like a nonstop fight. And I guess I never realized that everybody needed an advocate just to survive. It's true. I mean, there are a lot of people here without a son or a daughter or a family member here. No, no way of getting help. Yeah, just thank you for sacrificing so much because that all gave me the courage to fight for you. Well, you know that it's a mom's gift to give all those things, but it's a son's gift to accept them as gracefully as you have and to run with it and to show the world what you can do with support. That's Rebecca Dana Jealous and her son, Sean Pierre Regis, from the documentary Duty Free. The film will be broadcast nationwide on November 22nd on the PBS series Independent Lens. If you'd like to find out more about Duty Free or stream it, go to their website, dutyfreefilm.com. There you can also find out about many of the issues Sean Pierre mentioned in the film, 
including the global campaign to combat ageism, caring across generations, AARP, and other organizations working to create positive change. And Sean Pierre will be joining us at the Century Summit on December 7th. You can find out more about the conference and register at longevity.stanford.edu or at longevity-project.com. Support for the Stanford Center on Longevity comes from the Annenberg Foundation, dedicated to addressing the critical issues of our time through innovation, community, compassion, and communication. Please like us on iTunes and leave us a review. You can find out more about us by visiting our website, longevity.stanford.edu. You've been listening to When I'm 64, the podcast for caregivers. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Ken Stern.